Hello, I'm Atuba Judge and today is Friday. Praise God. Now, we've been studying 1 John and we're in chapter 4. Praise God. It's been an amazing study and thank you for all the feedbacks we get and all your messages, you know, letting us know how this um, teaching is affecting and improving your life praise god and i pray that the lord will give you many many more testimonies in the name of the lord jesus christ praise god so let's pray father we bless you for today your will is being made known in our hearts as we follow your truth written in scriptures lord Thank you because today burdens are being lifted, yokes are being destroyed right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, fill our hearts with your truth and your love. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise God. Now, 1 John chapter 4 and Verse 9, yesterday we stopped at verse 17. It says, Love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness on the day of judgment. Why? Because as he is, praise God, so are we in this world. Now we talked about this extensively yesterday. As he is, not so shall we be. He says, so are we. Praise God. So we remember Jesus in John chapter 17. He prayed a prayer when he was talking to God. He says, make them one as we are one. And then he's not saying, let us all sit down together and agree. No, he's saying one in nature. See that oneness. Say, I in you and you in them that we may be made perfect in one. Praise God. So, so it means he wants us to get to that place where what he's thinking is exactly what we are thinking. And how is that possible? It's possible because of the Holy Spirit. Did you see that? Because of the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit dwells in us, now that's the, the Bible says in him, all the fullness of the Godhead bodily dwells. Isn't that amazing? Praise God. So when you have the Holy Ghost, you have the Father, and then you have the Son. You know, that's why John was speaking earlier. He says, anyone who doesn't recognize the Son doesn't have the Father. He doesn't know the Father. Because if the Holy Spirit truly is in you, and you are speaking by the Holy Spirit, you will recognize the Father, and you will recognize the Son. Praise God. That's how it works. Because that's what the Holy Spirit does. He testifies of the father he testifies of the son thank you lord jesus now verse 18 it says there is no fear in love wow there is no fear in love now you know he had already told us god is love Praise God. So when he says there is no fear in love, he is actually saying there is no fear in God. You can't dwell in the secret place of the Most High. You can't abide under the shadow of the Almighty and then you are scared. Nah, nah, nah. So what does he say? When you dwell in love, there is no fear there. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So that tells you that when you are scared, you are manifesting the absence of love. When you are scared about anything, when you are scared about your health, you are scared about um, um, accident, you are scared about, you know, whatever you can think about that will cause you to fear. The moment you find yourself scared, you are manifesting the absence of love in your life. You know, one day the Spirit of God spoke to me and he says, you know, in, in Hebrews, he says, he has said, he will never leave you nor forsake you so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man, any man will do to me. And then the Lord said to me, he said, you know that scripture? I said, yes. What's the Lord doing in your life? Hmm. 
He says, he will never leave me nor forsake me. So what's he doing in my life? How do I take advantage in his presence in my life? And then I said, Lord, tell me. <laughs> Praise God. And then this is what, very sweet, so sweet. He said, I am in your life to always tell you what to do. Whoa, praise God. Whoa. Now, now, that's why we don't get scared of the future. That's why we are not scared of what's going to happen tomorrow. You know why? Because when we get to tomorrow, whatever shows up, he will just tell us what to do. That's what makes us know that we will just be fine. <laughs> and he understand that. If I have him, he knows all things. And he's got wisdom because he is wisdom. And then he will always be there to tell me what to do. Why should I then let fear into my heart? You see, because whatever shows up, he will tell me what to do. He will tell me how to go about it. He will tell me how to escape from any plan that the enemy sets. Even if I find myself roped in that plan, all I need to do is see, he is still there. He won't leave me. He won't let me be because, oh, you've entered into an enemy trap, so I'm out of here. No, no. Check, read the Bible. In the book of Acts, several times they arrested the disciples. And when they arrest them, what happens? An angel will come open the prison door and get them out. And then we go preach the words of this light, you know, to the people. He will always tell you what to do. Now, I know sometimes you want to think, hey, well, what about people who have uh, died in certain situations? What about people? Isn't that? Listen, listen, listen. I may not be able to tell about your relationship with the Lord. I may not be able to tell. But I know for myself that He is a good God. He loves me and He's demonstrated His love towards me. And then what do I do? I will take full advantage of His love and His presence in my life. I'm not going to judge my life based on another person's fate. I'm not going to say, oh, because so, so evil happened to so and so person, who then are we? No, sir. I don't know what happened to that person. I don't know why that thing happened to that person. But I know one thing. He is good. He is loving. He is caring. And he is always there to tell me what to do. So then why should I limit myself because of another person's failure? Why should I limit myself because of another person's relationship with him? No, I'll, I will work on my relationship with him. I make sure I understand his presence. I make sure I hear his voice and I understand every time he is speaking to me. And guess what? He is always talking. <laughs> That's why the Bible calls him. He's a speaking spirit, speaking spirit. There is no other way you will know God is in your life except by him speaking. Yeah. The same thing with heaven. There is no other way you can tell where God is in heaven except by his voice. So if he is known by his voice, then it means he is always speaking. If he is always speaking, it means if you don't hear him, it's not his fault. It's your fault. And guess what? Every time he opens his mouth to speak, it is the demonstration of his love to you. Praise God. <laughs> now let's, let's, let's finish this up. Thank you, Jesus. So he says, there is no fear in love. This is love that we're talking about. He's present there with you. And how do I know he's present? He speaks to me. And every word he utters, they are words of love because it comes forth from him. If he is love and he is known by his word, it means his word is love. Praise God. Do you understand that? Yep. Now he says, perfect love cast out fear. When I am perfected, he, he said it. He said, because fear involves torment you know how fear torments you hey you 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 know you're owing that bill oh and then the, the the landlord is going to come next week and when he comes he's going to throw you out and then you begin to imagine all manner of things so where will i take my load to? next week hasn't come see but but you're here where will i take my load to? and what do i do and do i get a haulage truck do i you know do i go and borrow money do I get... all those things are torments and that's what fear does. It brings torment. 
And before you know what, you're running helter skelter. No one has said anything yet. But you're just running all over the place. Fear brings torment. Why don't you spend that time rather in, in seeking him to know his mind? Lord, what's on your mind concerning this rent? It, it's going to be due next week. What's on your mind? You say, I, I don't hear him fast. I don't hear him pray some more. I don't hear him pray some more. Praise God. Until you hear. Because he is speaking. It's you that is not hearing him. So guess what you need to do? Tune yourself to hear him. Tune yourself. That's why we fast sometimes. We're not fast. Oh God. And don't, don't pray the wrong prayer. Don't pray. Oh God. Pay my rent. Oh Father. Pay my rent. You're my Father. I shall not want. So Lord. Pay my rent. It looks like a good prayer. But it's not. You know what you need to do. This is what you're supposed to do. Father. What's on your mind concerning this rent? That is due next week. What's on your mind? I want to know what's on your mind. And, and the more you seek him. Soon. You will begin to understand what he's thinking concerning it. And the moment you understand what he's thinking com concerning it, now it's just for you to open your mouth then when, when your knowledge concerning this is complete and you speak. When you speak with your mouth, guess what? The provision will come for that thing to be handled. So it says, of course, fear brings torment. Don't be tormented with fear. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Isn't that wonderful? So how do I know he first loved? I told you, his love is expressed through his words. And who spoke to us first? He spoke to us first. <laughs> yeah, he spoke first. And that speaking is the demonstration of his love. So when he says, we love him because he first loved, that's why Jesus said, if you love me, keep my word. So which one comes first? The word for you to keep comes first. So he demonstrates his love by speaking first. And you demonstrate your love by keeping what he has said to you. Is that difficult? Praise <laughs> God. 20. If someone say I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he had not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. Now listen, when you were perfected in love because you love God, you will love God because you've discovered that he loved you first. And the extent to which he loves you is the extent to which you will love him too. Now, when you love God that way, guess what happens to you? Fear is eliminated from your system. Fear is eliminated from your life. Now, the moment fear is eliminated from your life, innocence is restored inside of you. And guess what? You will begin to love people freely. Why don't you love people freely? Because you're suspecting them. Why are you suspecting them? Because there is still fear in your heart. So you, you go, ah, ah, I can't trust that person. Ah, no, no, no. Ah, I can't open my house to that person. No. Hey, no, 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 no. What's going on? Fear. Fear is walking in you. Because your imaginations are telling, if I let that thing happen, if I'm close to that person, and then this thing is going to happen, the person is going to do this, then the person is going to Fear is at work. And when that's going on in your life, now, now this doesn't mean you open your house to everybody. You, you understand what I'm saying? What I'm saying is, let the word of God, which is love, rule your decision. So you want to know if someone is allowed to come into your house or not? You ask the Lord concern. Lord, this person wants to come over to me. What do you think about it? Now, if the Lord says, let the person come. Hey, guess what? It doesn't matter what you think about that person or whatever anyone thinks about that person. The moment he, you, he said, allow the person in, allow the person in, still trusting in him who loves you and you know nothing will go wrong because there is no fear in you. You don't let the person in by the word of the Lord and start being suspicious. No, suspicious of the person. Fear is still at work in you. And that fear you must resist from your life. Praise God. Our time is up. Glory to God. All week has been awesome. And listen, we are still fasting and praying and welcoming the new Nigerians. It's been a glorious meeting. Praise God. Join us. We're, we're meeting today, we're meeting tomorrow, next tomorrow, Monday, and then Tuesday. 
just find a way to join us praise god i love you very much because his love is perfected in me i'll see you on monday bye bye